Whitman from the Indiana Capital Chronicle joins us tonight at 7. And uh, Whitney, I, I, an article came out uh, on the website yesterday that just like stopped me in my tracks, which is uh, it, it has words like a shortfall of $2.4 billion. Um, that's staggering, and it's, uh, it has to do with our roads and our infrastructure. Uh, take us through what this is all about. Uh, earlier this week, some members of the General Assembly heard from the Local Technical Assistance Program, which is a program that counties use to manage their assets when it comes to roads and bridges. And LTAP gave them some numbers about what it would take to maintain our roads, to improve our roads, and to completely eliminate all poorly rated roads in the state. So these three categories of roads of addressing roads each have different price tags just to maintain where roads are currently in Indiana. It would take a little under a billion annually, whereas the 2.4 billion number that you introduced the story with it would that's how much it would cost to eliminate poorly maintained roads in the across the state. And that includes, you know, paving uh, unpaved roads in rural areas too. So. The last time that the state legislature really looked at and revitalized its road funding program was in 2017 when it passed a gas tax in uh, indexing bill that increased the gas tax annually. And Hoosiers probably know that because you you feel it at the pump, but cars are becoming more fuel efficient. So it is becoming harder for that fund to maintain and actually pay for the roads and the improvements that we need. And so this number is kind of a jumping point for where legislators are trying to think, how else do we fund our roads if gas taxes are no longer enough? I mean, of course, there's there's going to be folks out there who are like, no, you know, you're not going to raise my taxes. Uh, how about Indiana gets on board with our surrounding states and legalizes marijuana. Has that, has that idea been floated since this article came out? It, that seems to be a lot of people's idea uh, of a cure-all. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple. I, I have to say that the discussions in Fort Wayne, which is much closer to Michigan than Indianapolis, might be slightly different. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, proposals have actually that this road task force hasn't looked into proposals like that just yet. This was this meeting earlier this week was specifically to identify where we are at and what do we need going forward. This meeting, this task force is assigned to kind of decide and identify what potential funding routes we have. Um, one creative idea I've heard is actually taxing deliveries better because delivery drivers are, you know, we're, we're how many Amazon packages are getting delivered each day? And if we add just a little tax onto that, um, could that generate some revenue? Um, another one they heard about is uh, road usage fees, something similar to what Virginia does, where it basically taxes drivers based on how much they actually drive versus how much they you know, like a versus a flat rate. So I think that they're going to be looking at that type of funding funding mechanisms later on down the line. But this meeting did not really touch on those issues yet. Yeah. So and and I guess uh, we can't obviously speak for all ninety two counties, but um, could you expect you know sometime in the near future, county leaders coming to the public and saying, hey, you know, we did a review of our roads, and uh, it looks like we're maybe going to need to increase this tax or that tax. Uh, is that what may happen sometime in the future? Yeah, that could be a potential route that counties need to go. Um, one of the things that the LTAP researchers emphasized is that they are going to potentially look at drilling down more on a county county, county by county level. So we will be able to get more of that information of what that looks like in Allen County versus uh, Davies County or something like that. Um, one of the county official, there was a representative with the Association of Indiana Counties there at the meeting who kind of showed what Elkhart County has been doing as an example and demonstrating that even though Elkhart County has things like wheel taxes and even horse and buggy taxes, that is not enough to meet the need for their roads and those counties have to dip into other general fund resources. And so it's just kind of 
a discussion of how are we going to fund these road fixes and of course a lot of the general funding that counties get for this comes from property taxes which is it's on its own discussion so i think that this is going to be something that is very hotly debated both on the local and state level you know it just thinking just a few months down the road now uh, indiana will have a new governor soon new leadership at the state house um how might that play into all of this roads don't particularly care if a Republican or a Democrat is in leadership. And I there are slightly different ways to go about fixing roads, but there's not one way that particularly falls into each political party. Um, and of course, you know, all three of the gubernatorial candidates have released their own prop proposals for addressing property taxes. And again, this is kind of one of the key fund funds that local units of governments have is property taxes. And so I think that any any of the candidates, you know, whoever wins is going to have to come up with their own proposal for maintaining and preserving and potentially improving our roads. I don't know that it will be an easy job for any of them, but they've that's going to be a key consideration for our next governor. No, and I, I think most voters say if you show me a candidate who has that perfect silver bullet solution for problems like this, they're probably going to get the most votes. Um, but we'll have to wait and see, right? Uh, Wendy Donard with the Indiana Capital Chronicle. Uh, there is so much to dig into with this article. Find it right now on the Indiana Capital Chronicle website. Uh, Whitney, thank you so much for being with us tonight at 7. Thank you. Thank you for having me.